Okay, hello, Steve Mann from the IMDT, Institute of Modern Dog Trainers. Uh, this is Pele, a uh, beautiful Pele. Uh, he's a rescue greyhound, uh, one of the thousands spewed out by the racing industry. Um, but he's part of our family now. He's a dude. Let me get back. So, Pele, beautiful. Every home should have one. At least one. Okay, so loose lead walking. I've been asked um, to do a quick video. It's never quick, but I'll make it as quick as I can. A quick video on loose lead walking. Um, very, very common request. Very, very difficult to teach. Don't, don't believe the dog trainer that says, oh, you put your hand here, you feed here, you walk this way, and jobs are good and next. <laughs> if only. It's the hardest thing in the world to teach a pet dog to normal people, <laughs> not us dog freaks, but to normal people, who have got limited time and to be honest limited motivation uh, to put into their dogs so most of the training that I do I try and make it as organic as possible uh, for loose lead walking I make it quite prescriptive I, I have several stages several set criterias that we move through that I'm just going to talk to you about because that helps the owners not push on before they're ready not to push on too soon so Loose lead walking. The first stage is a decent length lead, and I'm going to get the owners to start uh, have their hands by their belly button. That's it. Uh, the reason I want to do that is I don't want owners tightening up on the lead. Certainly don't want owners checking the dog. Uh, I want the dog to learn. If there's no tension on the collar and we're moving, good stuff comes out the monkey. If there is tension there, then say la vie. No, nothing bad's going to happen. Nothing good's going to happen. In fact, nothing's going to happen. But I want the slack, loose collar and movement with the owner to predict good stuff. It's going to happen to the dog. Um, that's our set criteria. I call it drunk dog walking. The reason I call it drunk dog walking is I want my owners to walk no more than five steps in any one direction. And I want them to be as undog trainer-like as possible, always. They can go sideways, walk round in a crescent, walk on a bit of a weird diagonal, walk backwards, whatever. The only criteria they're going to work to to start off is, is if the lead is slack, they're going to say good and put food into the dog on the move. We're not going to use any cue heel. Um, most people just say heel when the lead goes tight. The dog's walking along, the lead goes tight and the owner says heel. Well, what behaviour is being paired with that cue? You know, it's backwards. So I'm just going to set off no more than five steps in any one direction. The lead is slack. I say good and feed the dog. That's it. Stage one. Good. 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 Okay, that's our first level, that's our first stage. I want to remember, and I want to remind you guys, don't have food in your hands. I don't want this to be a lured behavior. I struggle to say lure, which is bad for a dog trainer. I don't want this to be a lured behavior. I want the behavior to make me say good, to make me then feed the dog. I don't want food in a hand to be the cue for slack lead. Just walking with me is the cue for a slack lead. Once the dog's moving with us on a slack lead and we've reinforced that. Then I'm going to move it on a little bit. I'm going to set off the first couple. If the lead is slack, I'm going to say good and I'm going to reinforce as before. Then when I'm moving and the lead goes slack, I'm not going to say good. I'm going to wait and see if the dog looks up at me. If the dog looks up at me, then I'm going to say good and then I'm going to reinforce. Now I'm starting to reinforce the behavior. Now we're going more operant conditioning. Start off with it's more classical in the environment this is happening i don't know what it is but i kind of like it the monkey's saying good and feeding me once that's ingrained then we're going more operant conditioning we're delivering consequences to behavior the behavior is checking in with the monkey on the move makes them say good makes them feed me so that's where we're going off
Good. Okay, now only when he looks at me. Good. 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 So the reason he's looking at me is we've, we've ingrained, we've charged up that battery that on the move, when my collar is slack, I get good stuff from up there. Once he's anticipating that and we're moving, well, there's no tension on my collar, where's my good stuff? Oi, monkey, where's my good stuff? Good. Then we feed. Delivering a consequence to eye contact on the move. If we can condition loosely that checking in with our owner on the move pays dividends to the dog, the dog can't look and pull at the same time. Mutually exclusive. So that's the first couple of stages. From there, then we mess about with our 3Ds. We add more distance before, before we turn, or we add more duration in between the eye contacts and us saying good, uh, or we do it in more distracting environments. If you've got several dogs to increase the distraction, we have the dogs closer together. If we want to decrease the distraction, we just open up our square so the dogs aren't so close. Okay, I promise it'll be quick. Um, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of questions. If there are, by all means, uh, drop me an email, info at imdt.uk.com or drop me uh, a message or add comments on Facebook. Again, got to stop doing that. Um, <laughs> comments, message, Facebook, you know the drill. Okay, enjoy your dogs. Have a good day. I'll speak to you soon. So long.